Welcome back. You're watching NewsX. My name is Vineet Malhotra. Well, farmers began their uh, Delhi Chalo March towards the parliament complex to highlight issues related to compensation, agricultural reforms and a legal guarantee for uh, the minimum support price. The protests spearheaded by the Bharti Kisan Parishad along with the Kisan Mazdoor Morcha and the Samyukt uh, Kisan Morcha and other farmer groups from at least 20 districts is called uh, to press key demands on the central government. The demonstration seeks to push for compensation and benefits guaranteed under the newly enacted agricultural laws. The protesters are seeking a 10% allocation of plots and a 64.7% hike in compensation under the previous land acquisition law, equivalent to four times the market rate. For land acquired after 1st of January 2014, they are asking for 20% of the plots. Additional demands include employment and rehabilitation benefits for the children of landless farmers, implementation of directives issued by the High Power Committee and uh, proper arrangements for resettling inhabited areas. And meanwhile, Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar voiced his uh, commitment to resolving farmers' issues and urged them to take an open and collaborative approach to address their grievances through discussion and dialogue. Uh, the Vice President also recommended Agriculture Minister Shivraj Chauhan for already engaging in discussions to address farmers' concerns. He reassured the farmers that the government is actively working on solutions but urged them to engage in constructive dialogue for a faster resolution. As pollution and politics burns at Delhi, the big question that comes up is, is India's capital becoming unlivable? That's the big question that we ask. All right. We'll talk about this with our guest, Dr. Jayajit Bhattacharya, President of CDPR, joins us on the show. Mr. Sumit Peer, Senior Political Commentator, with us on the broadcast as well. Indra Shekhar Singh, Agriculture Policy Analyst, with us on the show as well. Mr. MJ Khan, Chairman of ICFA, also joins us on the broadcast. Sumit Peer, I'll begin with you. Well, we all remember what happened during the farmers' protest. It was one thing to make your demands and uh, have these reforms initiated, but it's another thing, Sumit Peer, to you know disrupt and disable the lives of uh, unassuming and innocent civilians, and that's exactly what's happening today as well. You know, after the farmers' agitation, one would have thought that uh, you know there would be a better, more civil way of having these discussions from across the table. But it seems that the government itself has invited upon this reaction because not too much quelling was done the last time around as well. Uh, the people who are suffering as a result of this are not the politicians, are not the lawmakers, are, are not the parliamentarians, but uh, it's the civilians. But you know, there, there has to be something. Uh, urgently done about the situation, Sumit. What, what are your thoughts on this uh, repetitive behavior of disrupting normalcy in the capital? Hey, thank you very much for I mean, having me on your show. Look, this is becoming a national problem now. Unfortunately, we all have demands. We all have a wish list. Even you and me have a wish list as professionals, right? I'm very sure all the people on this panel, irrespective of their professions, have a wish list. Now, if that means that we can come and choke daily, we can block the streets of Delhi, we can cause ruckus in Delhi, we can disrupt normal lives, we can have kids not going to the school, we can have you and me taking four hours to reach, you know, for a 20 minutes drive. If that is the way how it is to be done, unfortunately, this is not what is appreciated and what should be done in democracy. If you have your rights, give up a right, give up a list of rights, talk to the government and get it done. You can even have a dharna or a protest at a designated site. But choco blocking daily, if that is the norm, then tell me if there's a farmer in Tamil Nadu, that means he will never get his rights because he cannot come to Delhi and choke it. If there's a far farmer in Kerala, how does he choke Delhi streets? A farmer in Sikkim, a farmer in Gujarat, they won't have the access to Delhi. So is if it is about choking the roads of Delhi, it's about making Delhi stand still. If that is the norm, we need, unfortunately, I have to say this, if to today this is allowed, then tomorrow, let's say factory workers want to do it. Let's say tomorrow taxi wallas want to do it. Let's say tomorrow, you know, uh, blue collared or white collared workers want to do it, right? Engineers want to do it. Doctors want to do it. I'm not trying to demean any profession, but any group of professionals may get around 20,000, 50,000 crown and you just block the uh, roads. Here you might come with tractors, I might come with the car. Exactly, it will do the same thing. Somebody might come with a truck, somebody might come with a bus and somebody might even come with a bulldozer tomorrow. So this kind of a thing is should not is not appreciated in democracy when the honorable 
डिप्टी प्रेसिडेंट अंकर जी इज क्लियरली सेट भाई वी विल लुक इनटू द डिमांड शिवराज सिंह जी चौहान इज अ वेरी सीजन पर्सन द द यू नो द कंसर्न एग्रीकल्चर मिनिस्टर एंड ही इज अ सीजन पॉलिटिशियन आल्सो ही नोस हाउ टू ग्रुप डील विद द पीपल आई थिंक कोलैबोरेटिव डिस्कशन इज द वे आउट choco blocking daily only puts the farmers in a bad name and you know by you know some farmers might be interested in it but if you look at all our farmer farming brothers and sisters across the country i don't think that is the manshi and that is the intention of it so collaborative discussion and if there's a dharna at a designated place is the best what you can do i would again request you do not block daily because we are already suffering with this uh, we are literally in a gas chamber we need couple of days ago we were having 1800 a- aqi which is like half an hour you are out you will get permanent heart or lung disease in that aqi so we have forest performing by burning we have schools kids are not going to schools now if you want to have one more protest this is kids will not be going to schools so the cha- the challenge is when the weather is good weather you know we are able to do our thing now today we are facing two challenges one is the weather and one is the protests so then out of a 12 months then we might have to find three months where there are no protests and where there was no weather challenges or there is not any other dharna or protest happening then you and me can go to our lives is that the new normal what we are looking to is that what the india's capital should be reduced to is that the people of delhi should deserve these are the questions which i am asking in the open forum and kindly answer me that sir hmm dr bhattacharya how do you see this situation sumit is right that uh, you know the right to life for uh, the people uh, in in the capital city as well as the ncr has been uh, completely compromised i understand you know that there are issues that the farmers want the attention of the government but is this the best way getting about it you know is is this something which is uh, uh, going to come up in a way uh, that will always be a reminder will always resonate of what happened during that long camp that the farmers put up uh between uh, you know uh, delhi and uh, some of the surrounding states and it took a turn for the worst no i i, I resonate with uh, what was just said right now in the sense that look we are not saying that the farmers demands are just or not just and i'll come to that to the demands in a moment but is this really the way to do it um when the farmers protest it's the people of delhi got impacted when the farmers burn the pareli it's the people of uh, delhi which gets impacted when the farmers block the roads it's the students of delhi who need to go out to educational cities such as sonipat who get impacted is that the right way of um, of uh, demanding for your rights uh, i don't think so you can't take away my right to establish your right that is clearly Correct. not acceptable now having said that you know look at some of the requirements and some of the demands reinstatement of the land acquisition act 2013 for people who are not aware of what that act was it essentially said that um 80% of the people who own the land must agree to the land acquisition before 100% of the land acquisition can be made uh this was when the previous uh, government was losing power and they had uh, lost the elections and this was the last act that they pushed through the parliament and uh, the comment from uh, subramaniam angleshwar ayer who is a noted economist was that that does this reminds us of the uh, uh, of, of the scorch and burn tactics of the romans where when they lost their territory they would burn the entire land and, and all food and everything and go so what this land acquisition act meant is that india can never develop because it's impossible to have 80% of the people agree to the land acquisition so you'll never be able to acquire land and therefore you'll never be able to develop so what's the impact of that the impact is that if there is the no industry coming up there is no other jobs but farming so you are trapping the farmers in a uh, in a in a profession or in a job which is giving lower and lower returns and uh, the land fragmentation is happening more and more so there are more farmers on on smaller amount of land because they can't get into any other industry because you have cut off the possibility of an industry and the farmers are coming back and saying please reinstate that uh, that land uh, acquisition act 2013 so that no industry comes up and we stay in farming and we keep asking for all these demands and all the unjust that's happening in uh, with the farmers we amplify that that is not uh, the way to move forward this needs to be thought through who is putting these uh, seven eight demands of the farmers the nine demands that you're showing on screen who's thinking this through is this good for the farmers themselves now some of the issues like legally guaranteed minimum support price fair enough you know they have an industry they want to drive it they want to have a return and that's a conversation they need to have with the government across the table 
waiver of farm loans. Now it's not asking for restructuring of farm loans. When a small MSME goes under debt, and there are more uh, small industry owners who are committing suicide than farmers, but it's not a competition that's going on. So it's not really a statistics I want to talk about. The limited point is that when a small farm, when a small industry goes under in the MSME, they ask for loan restructuring, not a loan waiver. Here, with impunity, we are asking for farm loan waiver. I'm not sure whether that's the culture we really want. Yes, farmers are in distress, but the solution can't be worse than the problem itself. And uh, similarly, you know, pension for farmers and farm laborers, why not pension for everybody else? And can we afford it as a nation? If you can afford it, then yes. I, mean, I also demand on your television that everybody should get um, you know, pensions. But I don't think we are rich enough to do that. We are a rich country, the you know the fifth or fourth largest, as you speak, uh, GDP in the world. But we are a rich country of poor people. Our per capita income is one of the lowest. Can we really afford pensions for everybody? Is there a is there a better way to do it? And the better way to do it can only come out when people sit across the table, rather than holding the middle class of Delhi hostage, where they can't go for work, they can't do get an earning, where laborers in in uh, Delhi cannot go for work because the city has been choked up because the uh, the ready wala cannot sell because the roads have been blocked up is that the way to really demand for uh, whatever the, the the demands are i think that's not really fair even though that there may be a, a history of, uh, uh, of of issues that the farmers have and a lot of it may be genuine but this is not the way to do protests hmm. indur how do you look at the situation uh, you know if if history is to be believed that uh, you know this government has given in uh, to the rights and the demands of the farmers but do you think that they've become you know cushy to the fact that uh, you know these 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 productions and these uh, protests are the best way to go about uh, securing what you want see Vineet, i would actually stray a little bit from the earlier two panelists and i say i think that history has proven that in India, civil disobedience is the best form of peaceful protest in this country. It began with Gandhi and the farmers, although I, I agree that this is an excessive demonstration, but sometimes excessive demonstrations are required to wake up policymakers. If the problem of farming was, why hasn't been the problem solved till now? Are there some new problems that are emerging? Is debt, uh, farm debt a new problem? When did we start accumulating this farm debt? Is land acquisition a new problem? All these questions actually have been very neatly being pushed under the carpet by successive governments. It's not the BJP or the Congress. Why haven't we, we been able to have an all stakeholder policy decision on how land acquisition should be done in this country? Why aren't the rates fixed? I would like to also say that if okay for development, what if we desettle GK to Vasant Kunj remove all the people from there and say because Delhi has too much pollution and you guys have to own too many cars so you should leave Delhi. How will that sound to people listening to this podcast or to the show? Now coming back to the history of protests, I don't think so that the farmers are ill placed in doing so. They are, if the protest is violent, I think it's absolutely wrong. But till the time they are doing it peacefully, I think they have a right to protest. MSP is an important issue. The governments can easily solve it. And if you look at historically, because we've used the word many times, what has the government's MSP committee done? If you look at agricultural policy today, and there is another person, co-panelist with me, Mr. Dr. MJ Khan, who can maybe talk about it. Industry has been favored in this country. Since the Green Revolution, we've only thought of actually pushing industrial chemicals, which are creating the pollution. The Parali problem itself was created by industrial revolution rice paddy varieties. Which had, in, had, which had a lot more silicon content. Even today, we are fighting for technological solutions and industrial solutions to agriculture. We are not going by our own Indian, Indian wisdom on agriculture. When people like, when, when foreign scientists like Sir Albert Howard, who was sent to teach Indian agriculture, said that, you know what, I have to learn from the Indians. That wisdom is lost and we are relying on industrial wisdom to solve our problems. Well, let me give you an update. Industrial problems create, industrial solutions create new industrial problems. And that's why we are in this state today. The high rising co input costs 
instead of getting you know a system of sustained inputs where the farmers can produce all the all the manure and everything else required at the local level we are buying from the market the market and the government is artificially subsidizing it so the taxpayer is losing at two levels one that we are subsidizing a system which is creating another problem in agriculture and in environment and second when the pollution is coming to us we are paying again through our pocket to clean that pollution whereas the farmers who apparently for all these solutions are invent, invested and all this money is being invested into is not is not happy also so we have a whole basically a huge colossal problem which no government wants to address because there is money to be made by many people in here from the seed companies to the pesticide companies to the fertilizer companies and uh, everyone is making money off this whereas the farmer he is getting cancer you and i we are getting cancer by eating all this chemically laced food we talk of indian wisdom where is the wisdom where 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 is the agricultural wisdom of this country for 5000 years did not indians know how to farm from ibn batuta till sir albert howard people have praised indian agriculture why is indian agriculture in such misery right now i think any government needs to hit at the source of the problem and not give it surface treatment as long as you try and clear the symptoms that if it will be a quick fix and the next year the problem will come back again like and i and i'm not only going to say that the government is not working recently the government announced 2500 crores about for natural farming mission hmm. why can't we have okay, a, okay. even okay. a more right. aggressive so so wants to come to what you said so with civil disobedience does this qualify as civil disobedience we need if this is allowed to happen then civil obedience right is with me you mr bhattacharya mr singh and dr khan also and a millions of people who will watch this broadcast now is it about how who can block how many streets now my you know my set of people might have their own problems doctors might have their own problems the challenge is if you let this happen there will be a classical closer anarchy in this country let me also tell you sir even if wherever you are sitting we need right now wherever you are sitting right now wherever mr singh mr patacharya khan sir and i am sitting right now there will be a farm some day here so saal pehle dead so pehle there will be a farm so should we bring down your studio my apartment your apartment and go back to farming So now, if you farms the farmers are talking that you give us four times the market price, otherwise I block your roads. Then what is this? Is this the way how a civilized society and a democracy works? I'm saying you have all the rights to protest, but go and do it at a designated place and talk to the government. See how much can be settled, how much cannot be settled. Because at the end of the day, Mr. Modi and Miss Nirmala Sita Raman does not have a printing press in their back in their last room of the house where they are printing the currency. Unfortunately, you are not even United States of America who prints the dollar. Even if you look at the situation of America, Vinit. Civil disobedience does not mean you trample about my rights. We need Delhi. May the schools used to close for three months, right? Summer holiday, winter holiday. Now the things are going the way things are going. I think they'll be only open for three months. So what happens to the people of Delhi? What happens to the education of Delhi? What happens to the rights of the people of Delhi? If farmers have this right of civil disobedience tomorrow, for the sake of God, we need. If a group of people of any profession want to come and block your Delhi, what is your answer? They will say, "Okay, our also right is civil disobedience. We will come and block your roads." And now I can say, we need. Why don't you say that you want four times the salary? Will your company give you? If I start asking my my clients to pay me four times the money, will they start giving me? Otherwise, I will come and block the roads. So if the market is there, there were new farm laws which you did not want. Okay, fair enough. Let's not get into that. If the market is there, it will be supported. The, uh, earlier you had options; you could sell it to anybody. Why didn't you want to go to the mandi? Sell it anybody. Even if you, if Americans can buy your produce, you have the option of you signing it to them. But you chose not to do it. And how can a group of farmers decide the collective wisdom of the farmers of the India? We know that Punjab. The, you know, every time we need the so-called Kisan Portus is limited to Haryana. a little bit part of up and a bigger part of punjab but if you look at the farming community of the india is it only limited to these three states no these are the problems which need to be addressed now let me address you two issues i'm not a farmer but i know two issues now the you know earlier farmers used to carry urea urea nahi milta tha black hota tha after modi ji came to put this neem coated urea and all came now you have this condensed urea in a bottle you don't need to carry a sack ek botal 500 mg 500 hard liter ki and a dapb again in a bottle which is the biggest revelation and now you can literally carry your urea and your dap in your pocket pocket and you know give it to your crops now these kind of revolutions have been done per hectare yield has increased production has increased but we need you want to save money and burn parali how can that become a chemical problem how that can become an industrial problem you don't want to invest money you want to do four crops and burn the parali how does that become a chemical problem or industrial problem 
Now, if you tell me there are some parts of Punjab where the rice is unfit for consumption, but does it apply to West Bengal? Does it apply to Jharkhand? Does it apply to other states which go rice, including JNK? No. The biggest rice producer in India, sir, is West Bengal, and the biggest wheat producer in India is Madhya Pradesh. So let me put it on clear. So where, where if these problems do not exist in West Bengal and Madhya Pradesh, the two biggest producers, how can the problems of a particular piece of land, I won't even want to say state, become the problems of the nation? And what is this, you know, trampling of the civil obedience we need? What happens to my rights? I'm asking as a taxpayer and a citizen of India, mere rights ka kya mere bachche school ki ja paenge? Why do we need to take four hours to reach a studio? Can somebody answer us? Why do we why do you need to burn fuel for 2000 rupees one way to reach your studio? These are some of the questions which the nation needs to answer. I am saying engage in a collaborative discussion with Mr. Chauhan. Mamaji is a very seasoned politician and he's a son of a farmer. He knows the problems. Aapko dharna karna, government will give a place, go and do that. But don't choco block our life. That is our limited take on it, sir. But I, that, if you want to see that disrupting life is civil disobedience, I have nothing to say. Then let the courts decide. Let us get in Mr. Khan into this. Mr. Khan, so how would you classify this recurring problem? And uh, does this have a permanent solution? Or do you think that uh, anybody who wants to, in fact, get things done by the government, they can just march into the capital city, hold the people over here hostage, and get what they want and leave? See, there is no doubt uh, that farmers are having problems. And uh, terms of trade have not been uh, favorable to farmers. And this is not about last 10 years, 15 years. This has been for a long time. Unfortunately, farmers are liking their advocates in Delhi. If uh, they had uh, good uh, institutions or good advocates in Delhi, probably you could have liaison and uh, you know engaged with the government well on their behalf and vice versa. Uh, to a large extent, this uh, these kind of situations could have been diffused. This is also a area of concern that after some problem arises, there is a sense of urgency to engage and try to address. But after the problem diffuses or apparently for the time being, we will go back to their normal routine. So again, after some time, this again comes up. There is a possibility that there could be some political elements also trying to uh, instigate it, but uh, let us not uh, uh, jump onto that kind of uh, conclusion or discussions. Uh, peaceful protest, as uh, 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 Mr. Singh said, that is the right available to everyone. But the people who are affected by that, uh, this also has to be looked into that whether blocking the roads is the option or there can be a way found out by engaging with the government that they can still protest and get their uh, you know viewpoint conveyed. So they are the role of media. Uh, thank you very much for hosting such uh, discussions. I'm sure that farmers must be listening and the government as well. But some of us can can also play a little more proactive role in terms of our access to the government. We can reach out to them and any role that government may like to and any role that farmers may like to assign to us, we should play that role. Uh, I would uh, also like to uh, add here that two years back when the farmers were on, you know, sitting on Dharna, there were a lot of engagement that were happening. Unfortunately, the institutionalization of the dialogue process or any permanent mechanism which could deal with the farmers, it is absolutely lacking. Uh, minister is there, no doubt what uh, Sumitji said that uh, he's a farmer's son, he's very sensitive, has a lot of experience of dealing with the farmer's issues. But he is too busy in his political activities. Uh, so, uh, 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 of late there, I have not seen uh, much engagement in the farmers. So, I hope that uh, now that uh, this problem has arisen and farmers are here, a little more sustained uh, dialogue with the farmers and their genuine problems. And one thing I am very appreciative of, Sudha Singh Chauhan is definitely very mature and a very sensitive leader. And he would understand quickly and uh, he has the weight and vision to be able to solve the problem if farmers are ready and, you know, with a positive and open mindset, they engage with that. So thank you very much. I think with these comments, I would like uh, other panelists to contribute. Hmm. All right. We've also... I'd just like to jump in. Yeah, Meet, quickly, sorry, quickly, just quickly. Meet, first of all, you know, the, the thing is that the, the DAP and other things that Sumitji talked about, you know, everyone knows that if you try it on your farm, you'll actually find out how many yields have increased or not. And if the farmers are protesting, it is because of the, of the consultative pro uh, process that has failed. We've known from history that if talking, who wants to get out of their fields and come to, the, come to Delhi? Nobody. Nobody likes this. This is also troublesome for the farmers because they have 
to organize believe me if there are channels that are open no one wants to protest it's not a political issue it's about the country and maybe this government with all the mandate can actually have a rule which is inclusive of everybody and not exclusive of any thank you all right we've also run out of time but nevertheless appreciate everyone who joined us and took part in this important conversation on that note we're going to dip into a short break be right back